Hello folks, welcome back. Uh, you may notice my usual dulcet tones been replaced with congestion from a cold caused by 18 months of leisure for my immune system due to the COVID season, but hopefully you can still understand me. Today we have a cool clock to talk about. This is a Gledhill Brook time recorder, AKA time clock. And so there's a regular time movement at the top. And then we have some connecting rods down to the punching mechanism. So the employee would stick their time card in the slot and pull the lever and that would register their start and stop time on a card. This has a couple different versions of in and out. We have the morning in, out for the lunch hour, in from the lunch hour, and then out at the end of the day. And so these are cool clocks. You uh, know my love for industrial and non-simple timepieces from the earlier series I did on master clocks. <laughs> and the uh, second half of that promised series is still in the same place it was six months ago because of this new shiny thing. But uh, anyway, I wanted to dig through this. The clock is actually complete, which I'm really excited about. Uh, a lot of these, the time movement runs, but the punching mechanism is incomplete in some way. So let's take a quick tour before we take it apart. We have our winding key. This actually is wrong for this clock. It's, it's, it does wind it, but it's pretty sloppy. I may have to actually make one if I can't find one that's the right size. And we have this removable bezel. And then there are a couple of swing arms here. See if I can do this one handed. And then we see our punch mechanism. There we go. And these are always absolutely disgusting when I see them. So we're gonna go through and this is uh, not remotely clean enough for the ultrasonic cleaner. This is probably gonna be soaked in mineral spirits or gasoline or something until I can get it even clean enough to clean. But it's all there. And so if I turn the minute hand, we see the mechanism advancing here. There's the time mechanism. And so this, if you stick a piece of paper in, it does actually punch. The ribbon is reasonably dried out, but it does work for the most part. So let's get into it and let's see how it works. With the dial off, we can take a look at the time side of the movement. First thing to point out is this is a fusee movement, which is very cool. This is a mechanism of evening out the springs power over its wind down. Springs are always very strong when they're fully wound and they get significantly weaker as they unwind. And one of the mechanisms to try to even that out is essentially how the gears on a bicycle work, where at the beginning of the wind, the spring has to pull harder on the movement, but as it winds down, the gear ratio change, which means that it's easier for the movement to power the clock in the second half of the wind. Once we get the movement out of the clock, we'll be able to see that better. But from the front here, we can see, I just uh, reattached the minute hand, we can see as I advance this, this rod is turning and that is driving our minute wheel. And then you can just see the hour wheel actually advanced as well. Minute wheel is in the middle. There we go, an hour advanced again. And then on the right side of this, we have this big weight and what looks almost like a striking rack system. But that's not what this is. This is the day of the week mechanism for the punch clock. So this other shaft that goes down attaches to a side of really disgusting gears over here. And there is a little finger, at the bottom of the clock right here. Let me get the camera to focus, there we go. And so when you stick your card through the slot, that card will go down and rest onto this platform and that will be how it indexes up and down for the days of the week. So you have one time card that's good for a week and you can see that this wheel on the left actually has the day of the week indication. So here we see an M for Monday and there's actually another M for Monday because there's AM and PM. And if I advance this manually, we can see there's TU for Tuesday, a pair of those. W for Wednesday, and you can see as I'm advancing this, the 
that is affecting the position of this lifting lever. So I have not thoroughly evaluated if everything is working or not yet, but I, I think we're uh, likely to be in, in relatively good shape other than just a bunch of years of grime. But on the, the mo time movement, how that works is as the hours pass by, you can see that rack is lifting on the right side of the movement. That's driven by this cam. And when 12 hours goes by, this is going to, um, actually there's a little fly on this, which is kind of interesting, just to take a little bit of the stress off of the, uh, the impact here. There we go. And that is what activates our day of the week adjustment. So just a quick overview of what's supposed to happen. Uh, we'll get this apart and cleaned up and start uh, getting it back together in a restored condition. The movement's out of the clock, and now we can clearly see the fusee mechanism. The fusee consists of two parts. This is the spring barrel here, and then this tapered pulley is what drives the movement. You wind the clock with this arbor here, and as you wind it, the spring barrel rotates and the chain then starts wrapping around this uh, pulley that decreases in diameter. And what that means is when it's fully wound, the gear ratio is high. One turn of the spring barrel equals a couple turns of this uh, wheel here, but as it winds down, this diameter grows, which means that one turn of the spring equals proportionally less rotation in the mechanism. So it's the same principle as a bicycle, but it's just expressed a little differently. So that's the most notable feature here. These are always really fantastically engineered uh, machines. The cheap stamped kitchen clocks are nothing uh, compared to how these are built and how they run. Uh, with any movement, we need to get rid of the latent power in the spring to avoid an explosion. And that's going to be the case here as well. You can see that we're out of chain. So this the clock stopped in this position, but there's actually still tension on this spring barrel. So I need to get rid of that before we can take the movement apart. Here is our letdown arrangement. I have the movement securely clamped to my bench. This can be really bad. I have a scar from early in the time in my clock repair from trying to let the power down in the movement without securely anchoring the movement. And this is a heck of a spring. The spring has to do a lot of work to drive the punch mechanism, and so it is big. And we don't want to take any chances here. So what I'm going to do is use a winding key. I found one that fit a little better than the one that came with the clock. And I am going to put a little back pressure on this and then loosen this screw. And when I loosen this screw, that will release the spring tension onto the key, and then I'll be able to gradually let that down. It is unfortunate that uh, this is so big. I have a letdown key system that is designed for this and allows you to have some kind of controlled slip in your hand, but this is too small to go on this particular clock, so we have to improvise. So I'm going to very carefully let this screw down, and we'll take the power off. I'm going to use both hands to let this down. And I'm also going to count the number of turns. So there is one turn of spring preload, and that's about it. And so when I put this back together, I know what kind of spring preload needs to go back on this. So we have now removed the spring pressure from the clock, and it is going to be safe to disassemble it.
Well, it's been a few days since the last installment in this video, and I've done quite a bit of work on this movement. I wanted to make this more about the time clock as a whole rather than just another movement rebuild. So the plates are polished, the movement is gone through, and I just kind of wanted to take a minute and point out why a movement like this is so special and so different. And a couple things of note here, this is the mainspring barrel, and this thing is absolutely gargantuan. And here is the spring. This spring is about an inch and a half, maybe even an inch and three quarters wide, and it's very long. Uh, it's actually in really good shape. So there's two different schools of thoughts on mainspring maintenance. One of those is you always pull it out, uh, use a solvent to remove the grease, and then repeat that process. And the other is a little bit closer to if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I'm going to, for this clock, um, err on the if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the reason for that is this is a contained spring. If something were to break, the spring is not going to damage any other parts of the clock. In an open frame clock, the spring could bend or break off a variety of things inside the movement, and that could be a more severe deal. And actually working with springs this big can be uh, a little bit dangerous. So we're going to leave this alone, but I did want to show it to you. And I wanted to just compare this movement with a typical movement that you might find in a kitchen clock. And so here is the kitchen clock movement. And if we compare the plate size, you can see that the time clock plates are twice the size roughly of the kitchen clock plates. And if we compare thickness, you can see again, it's just uh, just no comparison. The the time clock here, the plates are maybe two and a half times, maybe close to three times the thickness of the kitchen clock movement. And again, the mainspring, we've got a typical mainspring for the kitchen clock that's about three quarters in diameter. This one is more than twice as wide and uh, just absolutely in another universe as far as power goes. And I think that's really neat. This movement just screams quality. And one of the parts that uh, is very cool, keep using that word because this is such a neat movement, is the fusee chain itself. And so this is built sort of like a bicycle chain. And there are uh, outer parts and then there's a center part. And let's see if I can show this there. And so you can see that there is, uh, every other link has either two spans or one span in the middle and these are pinned with little pins and these were made with a very cool machine i'll see if i can find a link to the youtube video of a company in the uk that actually maintains a, a um, antique cam driven uh, essentially a swiss screw machine lathe that makes the little pins for this and then they actually punch the uh, the links out from a piece of steel and then by hand, one link at a time, fabricate this and uh, ream the, the pins into the, the metal links and then sand it flush. So in this chain, there is a tremendous amount of labor that somebody put into this. Uh, again, there's two schools of thought on do you oil this or do you not oil this? I've taken this through a solvent bath to get rid of some of the gunk that came on it. You can see some of that still on my fingers. Um, I generally am of the opinion that oiling is a good thing. The argument against oiling is that the oil can attract abrasive dust, which can wear faster than if you didn't have any oil. Uh, and I believe that in certain parts of the clock, I wouldn't oil a chain drive of a cuckoo clock or something like that because it just doesn't seem necessary. They last a really long time without wear. Uh, this is interior to the movement, and if this broke, that would be... Um, not real great, and so I think I am going to oil this. Um, I'm likely to service this clock again in the future because I own it personally, and so we're going to do that. But just wanted to point out those couple things as well as the bevel gears, which are kind of unusual in a clock like this, and these drive the, the lower mechanisms off of the clock. So I'm going to go ahead and get it back together, and we'll get this part of it running because I want to get onto the time mechanism. We are reassembled, relubricated, and back in the clock, and everything looks great. We've got the fusee wound back up, and I'm going to test this for a few days and make sure everything is solid. And in our next part, we will attack this mess.
Should be exciting. Thanks for watching.